Okay, everybody, so now I just finished the quick reads for each sign. That's kind of like a three-part video that I'm just going to segment into three parts and uh, we'll timestamp it. Hopefully somebody will do that. If I don't do it, I'm going to try to do it myself, but usually someone else just does it. Um, but I won't rely on them this time. I'll, I'll, I'll listen and I'll do it myself. So let's go ahead and see like what these cards are going to be for everyone. My mouth is getting dry now because I've been talking for like 45 minutes. Okay. <laughs> the cards have been cut. Shuffled and cut, you know, because I just don't want to spend too much time on cam. All right. Move that away. Okay, cool. there and this is going to be the challenge okay so at the bottom of the deck we have the prince of wands which is the knight of wands and this is coming from scorpio and going into sagittarius so this could be indicative of like october november december it could be indicative of of the entire fall season for some of you you know you're putting that energy behind you whatever was going on at that time um the Prince of Wands is also kind of like, you know, the Knights all fight for something. So the Knight of Wands is fighting for passion. So fight for what you are passionate about. You know, it's kind of like fighting for your truth as well. So some of you are, I feel like you're fighting for your truth, you know. It's one third Scorpio, so you might have been feeling kind of stuck in some kind of place, but now you're sort of trying to, you're fighting to break out of those, um, I don't know, those, those, those bounds, those barriers that you have placed for yourself because of whatever was controlling you emotionally, right? Or whatever you were emotionally fixated on, you are trying to break out of that. You're trying to have a, a, a breakthrough. Um, it could be an emotional breakthrough. It could be a, a truth breakthrough. Um, it could also even be, you know, just feeling like you have gotten past a certain point that you couldn't before. You know, you're feeling victorious within this energy here. And if you don't, you you are very um, focused on achieving this victory or reaching this goal, you know, or getting to this new place or, or getting to this new height. You know, I feel like um, you are... I don't know it's like a driving force that is inside of you you know it's like not going to let up and it's not going to give up because the prince of wands does not give up it doesn't give up until it's the last you know the last 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 moment <laughs> does not give up so this is saying don't give up period Let's see what's in the in the center for you. Wow, the justice card, breakthrough, right? Breakthrough, and the justice card here is talking about seeing past, you know, limitations, right? Not settling for what is given to you first. You know who does that? Um, and also if this is, if this is taking what was given to you, how are you going to transform that? Or how are you going to, you know, multiply that, right? 
The Justice card is also talking about how you have a responsibility to decide for yourself what it is that you want to do. You know, you know that there are consequences to actions, right? Um, and you know that there is going to be a reaction uh, to every action, right? So it's kind of like cause and effect, uh, the transference of energy. And that's what Libra, Libra talks about, you know, because that scale is sensitive to its environment and energy transfers to it because if they're, you know, the scale has to be super duper 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 sensitive to be accurate, right? So you want a scale that is actually going to be very sensitive because then it could be, it could, it could really tell you when something is off. You know, so that's what the justice card is talking about. That's why people go to court when something is off. So people can be like, well, this is what happened and this is why it wasn't okay. And this is what has to happen now or this is where we find ourselves, you know. And that's kind of what the justice card is talking about. That's how it's connected to the judgment card. This is where I find myself ultimately, right? And it's kind of like, well, if Aries is I am, then I am my karma, right? Everyone else is my karma too because of the relationships that I'm connected to. They change me. They bring resources into my life, okay? All kinds of things. So we have a responsibility to respond, to react. Not even, we have a responsibility, you know, to respond to things in a measured way, in a well-measured way, right? Measure twice, cut once, okay? This says that there's been a lot of time that has been determined or been thought about, you know, sorry. <laughs> so something has been on your mind, whoever you are, everybody, for a while now, and it's time to change, you know? Hmm. This is very much October energy. I saw a guy tonight with a shirt on or a sweatshirt and it said October's very own. And there was an owl on the, the, the logo or whatever, on the graphic. And it's interesting, there is an owl here. The owl talks about wisdom, talks about reason, talks about logic. Yeah. But we can have fun with reason and logic, you know what I mean? Because we're, it's a point of discovery that is opening us up to change, you know? So this is new information that is coming in, valuable information that is going to change your reality. That's great. Let's see what that immediate influence is over the justice card. The seven of wands, don't be afraid of it. You know, don't be intimidated by it. This is saying that like in order to move forward, sometimes you have to, It's it's it might be harder to move on from certain, some things just because it's like you could get comfortable staying back because you're not being, you know, uh, challenged or you're not being opposed but sometimes you have to push past what you have been allowing to oppose you or what you have been allowing to control you or, you know, maybe you have been allowing something to take away your imagination or to steer you away from your imagination or your dreams, right? Or what you set out to do for yourself, right? So it's asking you to remember what you set out to do for yourself. Remember what your intentions were. That's why the justice card is here. It's asking you to remember, bring back balance into your reality. Bring back balance into your life. You know, don't be afraid of what other people question you are doing. If other people question what you are doing, don't, you know, they are afraid of, of taking risks for themselves. So, of course, they're going to, you know, think that you're silly for taking risks for yourself, right? 
You know, some people just, just watch, some people like to watch other people be heroes when they can be heroes to themselves. And then the Seven of Wands is Mars and Leo. So this is Mars being five houses from where it rules originally in Aries. Right? So that's like you have to be conscious of how you are navigating your reality. You are steering. You are the vehicle. You are the one that has to do everything if you want to see anything happen. Does that make any sense? Let's look at your recent past. Okay, work. That happened at 11. Sorry. <laughs> that happened at 11 11. It's like 11 21 now, just because all of that just happened. But you got the feral. We got the feral, which is the temperance card. And this is talking about, you know, being conscious and being aware and being, you know, open to change. Right? And it's 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 echoing the seven of wands here just because it's Mars being in its fifth house. Okay? Even though this is Mars being in oh no, it is Mars being in the in the fifth house. <laughs> Sorry. Naturally. So this is a card of uh innate gifts, talent, skill, um it's a card of self-reliance. It's a card of believing in oneself. Even when no one else believes in you, you have to believe in yourself. You must. If you don't, then what are you doing here? What is your existence about? And here we go with the temperance card, which is number 14. The one and four, a five, fifth house, Leo. You know, so we have to be willing to change because our life was meant to be more than just one note. It was meant to be more than just that thing that we were when we were five or eight or 19, you know, everything adds on. Think of your existence as a, you know, <laughs> a a, I guess a pan, a saute pan and ingredients keep getting added to it, to this dish, you know, that is going to be amazing one day, irresistibly amazing, but it's just unfinished. So you have to always see yourself as being unfinished. You know what I mean? The one thing that we achieve can't be the one thing that we want out of life, you know? You're a work in progress. And that's what the temperance card talks about. That's why it's kind of like a card of artistry. Because it's like, you know, figuratively, we are art. You know? So if you don't don't commit to something that keeps you, that prevents you from, from allowing color to seep into your life. See what I mean? And um, you are the light, right? And light is the only way that we can see color. So you have to be the light, the guiding light, the temperance card, right? <laughs> the guiding light, Archangel Michael, is allowing you, is giving you the opportunity, the chance, and it might even be, it might even feel like it's forcing you to see the possibilities. But, you know, something has become obsolete because anytime the temperance card comes up and you're mixing those, those elements, you're trying to bring balance to something that may be unstable or destabilized, you know, destabilizing or destabilized, um, you know. So I feel like that is something to really consider this change, you know, that is happening inside of you and outside of you, right? I think it's, a, you know, an adjustment. The 
this adjustment is being made in real time and you are doing, go, you know, working as you go, you know, fake it till you make it, that type of thing. That's what I'm getting. That's how you were in the past, right? In the recent past. But we are also, you know, adding more stabilized energy to what we already have. You know, it's all it's self improvement. You know, self improvement doesn't necessarily mean making more money. You know, someone could be like making a lot of money, but they could be, you know, stuck on an island doing research for eight months out of the year in Antarctica. You know, and they're like, oh, I've been doing this for 12 years now, and I don't want to just be like stuck on this island in Antarctica doing this research for the rest of my life. I feel like I've done my work here and now I can go and do my work elsewhere or do my work somewhere else, but still have it be connected to what I was doing here. You know what I mean? It's like that type of thing. You don't want to get stuck because life has given you so many different avenues and so many different channels and different ways to kind of enhance who you are and what you do okay it's the magic of life you want to stay connected to that six of swords is here right what is this mercury and aquarius this is mercury being exalted but then it's also mercury being what is that Mercury being in Sagittarius would be seventh house. Capricorn would be eighth house. Aquarius would be ninth house, right? Yeah. So Mercury being in the ninth house from where it is, it originates. That is <laughs> like Mercury being in Sagittarius, which is the Eight of Wands, right? Not being held back, not feeling restrained. So this Mercury in Aquarius has that same type of energy. You're not letting something hold you back. You're moving forward, right? That's the beauty of life, is to be able to flow with the current you know, if water gives life, then wouldn't flowing with life's current also be enlivening? Is that a word? <laughs> it's also liberating too, because water, water is liberating. Water wants to be free, you know? So this is saying that you want to be free of something. It could be like you want to be free of something in your mind, you know? That is really what it is. You want to be free of something in your mind, you know? Because sometimes our mind can control us and keep us held back. <laughs> it's innovation, right? And it's also saying this is genius. This is a genius idea. Whatever it is that you're thinking about, it's genius. For you. No one else might think it's genius because they're like, oh, you're thinking of like, um, I don't know, what could I say? <laughs> you're thinking of starting your own uh, weaving company or knitting company or something like that, you know what I mean? And for you, you might be thinking that it's a great idea. That is just the most random thing that I could think of, you know what I mean? But, and it's very late here. What time is it? So you could be just thinking about doing something differently. You know, sometimes people don't, won't believe that you can do this thing that you've never done before that, you know, you want to do. But you're going to prove to people 
that you know what you're doing, but they're going to see it later. They're just going to be watching you do what you do. You know, it's not like you're going to be like talking to them about what it is that you're doing. They're just going to be seeing you do, do what you do from a distance, right? From a distance. It's all working out. Let's see what's going on in the moon position. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Great. <laughs> I like the tower. You know, because I'm a Libra. And the tower is a seven, right? It's number 16, Major Arcana. One and six is a seven. Since I'm a Libra rising, Mars actually rules my seventh house. Okay. <laughs> Can we talk about being a Libra rising real quick? <laughs> it's kind of amazing because everything is flipped. That's why Uranus is the esoteric ruler of Libra because unpredictability factor. The tower, right? Like I said, unpredictability factor. So you're acting in ways that people didn't anticipate or expect, right? Because you've been doing something, you've been building yourself to be this way and now you're going against what people knew you to be. And not in like a catastrophic way. To other people, it might be like, oh my God, shocking, gag worthy. But this tower in the moon position, it's giving me new moon in Aries because Mars is going to rule this new moon and Mars is going to be in Gemini getting ready, I think. Um... And, you know, Gemini doesn't want to commit to anything, really, because it's coming from Taurus. It's like, ah, oh, Taurus, you just kept me so, like, stuck. I just want to be free now. Okay? And with Mercury being in Aries, Mercury is the esoteric rule of Aries, you know, because Aries wants to be free, too free world Gemini just wants to be free right not being in the box anymore but um yeah this Mars being a number seven this could be talking about like it's been a struggle and since it's been a struggle, now it's kind of like, you don't want to struggle with it anymore. This emotion, right? Holding on to the, or carrying the weight of the emotions around. You just kind of, you just want to let it go. You want to leave something behind you. And this is kind of like, you know what? I didn't expect it to be like this. So now I'm going to you know, either do the unexpected or you know, wait for the universe to force me out of whatever situation I'm in that I know I want to change. That's happened to me before in relationships. I literally called the 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 time span of when a relationship in my life would end. I mean, it was like a in, in like an intimate relationship, you know, someone who was my boyfriend partner. And uh, that shit happened at, at literally the time that I that I told my friends it would happen. And uh, it's kind of like, that was like eight months later, but it was eight months before that I knew that we weren't gonna be together. So why couldn't we just break up then? You know what I mean? But then like eight months later, it happened. So the tower kind of came, you know what I mean? But it was like, <laughs> you know, you already knew it was gonna happen. So you knew that this moment would come. That's what the tower talks about. I knew this moment would come. Damn, it's not bad. I don't see it as being that. You know. Let's see what's going on. Or you could some of you could be dealing with Aries, some of you could be dealing with Leo, Libra, Aquarius, Sag. Yeah. For sure. Definitely definitely Aquarius, Sag, and Libra.
like I said, and Leo too. <laughs> mm. All right, let's see what's going on in the anxieties. Ah, the Queen of Cups, yeah. So some of you might be too much in your head. You know, you could be exploring your feelings too much, right? And your feelings are going to deter you from action, right? Think about it. If I douse water on a flame, on a candle, the candle will go out. So sometimes you have to separate emotions, right? You have to take out, take the emotions out of the action, right? And also you don't want to do things based on emotion because your emotional aggression could lead you to do something that you can't necessarily reverse or say something, right? Or cause some kind of emotional damage that you can't reverse, you know? But this also asks you, the Queen of Cups, to remember to stay flexible in your emotions. And it's also to remember that you possess a level of emotional intelligence that can always be uh, resourced. You can always pull from that. Your level of emotional intelligence helps you problem solve, helps you can, you know, process your emotions. You know, we have to think of a healthier way for you to process your emotions, right? It's good to have cathartic experiences where you are, you know, maybe expressing an emotion that sort of helps you heal from how you may be thinking or feeling or something that you may have done or some impression that was left upon you or some memory that you would like to put to rest or something. Not even put to rest, but like, I don't know. What am I trying to say? It's, it's almost kind of like leaving the memory in the time and the place that it existed and not bringing it with you as you move forward, right? Don't carry the hurt around with you anymore. You know, it's not necessarily yours to identify with, you know? It's kind of like collateral damage, right? Let's not create a, a, a monument for our emotions, right? Let's not do that. In your Mars position, you have the Six of Cups, which is the Sun in Scorpio. This is the sun being four houses from where it originates. So it has to do with, you know, home, family. Some of you could be having issues with your mom or your parents, um, you know, with your kids. Your kids could be growing up very quickly. And, you know, you are starting to realize that, like, there's a lot of things that you are some of you could just be worried about the experience that your children are going to have in this world that we are living in as they grow up and get older. You know, focus on what you can control in a healthy way, you know, the love, the light, right? If you build a loving home, then that's the best you can do. You know, it's the best you can do. You're doing the best that you can. And that's what the Six of Cups talks about. You know, we're always ready to improve. 
we're always ready to improve, but you also have to remember that you have been doing the best that you that you can, right? And it was the best that you did for yourself in that moment. So it was the best that you could do. You know, it's not about thinking about what my best could have been that I didn't get to prove. Leave that behind. What can you do now? What's the, the next thing that you do? You know what I mean? Put your heart and your soul into that. You know, and that's what the Six of Cups talks about. Put your heart and your soul into what is, what is, what is available to you now. Right? You definitely want to, you know, challenge yourself. Go past, you know, the margins that you've placed for yourself. Move beyond, move beyond the boundaries that you've placed and set for yourself. Venus position, death card. Definitely move beyond the bounds and the boundaries. Move beyond the margins that you place for yourself. And the death card talks about that just because, you know, life... Our life is basically the only thing that we know. We don't know death. So it's kind of like we can't take ourselves out of the margins of life. Or we can't take ourselves out of the boundaries of our waking life. We just can't. Um, So some of you could just be relating to death or relating to what you can't control. Or you could be relating to how you accept what you can't control. Because death is kind of like an ultimate sacrifice. And thinking of it is a part of stoicism, is a form of stoicism that helps you put, you know, life into perspective and helps you bring further meaning to that which you have already experienced, right? So that you can give more value and appreciate the texture of everything that you will experience henceforth, right? It's being acutely aware of change so that we don't get stuck or, or, or get possessive or become obsessed over things, right? We have to maintain some level of um, sacrifice. You know, we all have to sacrifice something. Some of you have had to sacrifice relationships right some of you have had to sacrifice parts of yourself for relationships and you're not doing that anymore we're not doing that anymore we're not sacrificing ourselves right for our relationships it's like literally giving breathing your life into someone else that already is alive and they're they can walk on their own why are you carrying them why are you trying to you know cater to their existence don't do it and stop being beating yourself up over not bring not giving the attention to people that are demanding it you know cuz this is something that's always going to be there right so this card talks about people that are always going to be there you know to be that low vibrational energy because that's just who they are Some people are just this energy. That's why it's a four, you know, connected to Aries, but connected to Cancer, talking about how people grew up or, you know, what they learned from their parents or their mom or whatever. You know, these are the these are the things that we absorb that we can't control. But then we are made aware that they are weak points in our makeup, you know. So, yeah, we are uncovering, we are peeling back the layers of, of who we are and who we thought we were and who we want to be and where we want to go. Yeah, some things you can't take with you into your next, into to the next phase. Some things you weren't meant to take with you. Right? Because you, you can't even take your skeleton with you. After you die, you got to leave that here. You got to leave some here, honey. You know what I mean? You can't take it with you. Pay up. So sometimes you pay up by leaving certain aspects of your life behind. You know, by quitting that job, right? That you've been wanting to quit. Or by taking a job because you've been wanting to leave another one. You know, I'm not saying quit your job, you know what I mean? But, you know take back your power by 
<laughs> practicing your free will, right? To be self-reliant, <laughs> okay? And provide for yourself, you know? This is a card of self-reliance. This is a card of, you know, survival, right? And doing what you have to do sometimes, right? Scorpio is ruled by Mars. Mars is exalted in Capricorn. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Okay, Prince of Pentacles and the energy moving forward. So moving forward slowly. This is kind of like... Um, Fighting for stability, you know, fighting for means in life, you know, uh, really staying persistent in your goals, persistent in your endeavors, maintaining a level of efficiency right keeping yourself um in the best shape and conditioning possible right because that's how you're going to get where you want to go that's how you're going to be successful is if you keep a strong body and mind <laughs> And make sure that everything in your daily life is being taken care of too because that's when you feel empowered and that's when you feel strong is when like everything is kind of, you know, more balanced than off. Because when things are off, you're going to be focused and worried about what's off. You're not going to be thinking about what it is that you want to do to be great. Or you won't be... Um, actually taking in the beauty that surrounds you because you'll be looking at what's off right so let's just try to not make ourselves crazy with what you know isn't always ideal or pure you know Nothing is all nothing is going to always be perfect. So as long as we are in control of our reality to some degree, you know, we don't control everything, but we control most of what goes on in our inner world. Right? That's why the Knight of Pentacles has that shield. Cause it's like I don't I don't I, I don't know what goes on beyond my shield, but I know that behind my shield I am good. reliable okay moon in Aquarius so this is the moon being eight houses from where it originates in cancer so that's transformation so this is saying a relationship has transformed you or your relationships are karmic and they're helping you transform yeah this is also saying like sometimes people are like <laughs> you know we want to control certain aspects of our friendships and our relationships, but what we want for those people is based on our ego. It's based on what we want for them, not what they may want for themselves. That's why the moon in Aquarius is kind of like, I want you to tell me what it is that you want or what it is that you're doing. Otherwise, I'm going to come up with it for myself, for you. You know, it's like uh, maybe obsessing over friendships or maybe there is some possession there, you know? It's kind of like this unhealthy possession, 
right? You don't own the people in your life. You have to remember that too. So no one has to answer to you, especially with that seven of swords energy. Because it's saying like, uh, when we get out there or when we are out in this world, sometimes there are some unexpected things that, you know, break up our understanding of who we thought we were to others or who we thought others were supposed to be to us or for us. So this Seven of Swords definitely uh, is kind of like a wake up call that we don't possess anyone emotionally or just because we have an emotional attachment to friends or to people or to our relationships doesn't mean that we own those relationships. You know, we are just participating in those relationships. We don't own them. We don't own people, you know. So you can't necessarily force someone to think the way that you think or, you know, feel the need to give, you know, unsolicited advice just because you know it helps us be in control of an aspect of our selves if that makes sense I have an ex that always kind of like comments on like the clothes that I wear I love the clothes that I wear you know I feel like I wear a lot of different stuff yeah, I don't I don't show my outfits and shit like that on Instagram because I'm like I just don't do that. I just wear my clothes and then I go outside. Um <laughs> and I don't pay full price for clothes. <laughs> the only thing I pay full price for is food. Um but that person just kind of always needs to comment on something that I'm wearing because they wouldn't wear it. Well, <laughs> honey, I'm sorry that you wouldn't wear it or that you can't wear it or that you, you know, whatever. You know, it could be the colors, right? Maybe you're not bold enough to wear the colors or maybe, you know, whatever. But I'm just giving you an example. That's like somebody like really be like struggling in their own mind because of some shit that I am buying with my own fucking money. My mouth is dry. Right, stay in your lane. <laughs> right it's moon in libra but this is also saying it i mean like the the seven of swords and the two of swords are essentially like the same cards for me because the seven of swords is moon in aquarius and the two of swords is moon in libra so the moon is like the emotional ego and the most emotional ego is trying to make a decision right don't make decisions based on what other people need from you don't make decisions based on the intimidations that someone tries to impose, you know, or imply, right? Um, you know, you are your own leader. You are the leader of your destiny, I believe. And you are steering the ship. You are the navigator. So you make the decisions on where to turn and where to stop and all of that. You know, and this is also saying don't make decisions based on emotion because that is going to get you into trouble sometimes. You have to make decisions based on logic and not emotion, right? Um, you know, and this is always saying that you have options. You always have options. Uh, and this also says that like when one thing, when one when, when one relationship ends, another one is just around the corner to begin. And I'm not talking about, like, romantic relationships. I'm talking about, you know, sometimes everything has an expiration date, you know? And that's what this card reminds us. And that's not you. Your expiration date will be this. And we're not talking about that. We're talking about small deaths and relationships, right? Relational deaths, Right, because this too is related to the judgment card, which is Pluto, okay, and also the high priestess. So it's like divine order puts an ending to things when they need to be ended, right, figuratively, okay. So we have to have a strong sense of, you know, uh, uh, 
strong mind to be able to accept certain things that are challenging to accept because we don't see the other side of it. We don't see how the grass could be greener, you know, but it's about you having an experience that's going to further you in life and as a person. Okay, thank you so much.